Hello, and welcome to the CTF Beginnings, Introduction to Capture the Flag Events. This is for DEF CON 813. My name is Sunny Ware. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, you can add me uh, to follow tweets. Now, the session outline, I'm going to just do a brief background of what CTF is. We'll look at some of the major examples. We'll also check out the schedule and how to get plugged into that, and then we'll look at a demo. Now, first of all, why in the world would you ever want to engage or participate in a Capture the Flag event? I can tell you that what it provides is a way to have some hands-on practical experience in applying information security concepts and theory. It basically takes that theory and those high-level concepts and makes you drill down into a level of understanding that you probably didn't even realize you had or needed to find. Now, as far as tools, there are tons of tools out there. Really, it depends on what platform you're playing on. If you have access to a Kali Linux platform or a Kali Linux VM, uh, definitely all of the tools that are available on that platform are quite handy. I'm just naming a few here, just as a sprinkling. Of course, you're gonna need some kind of compiler or decompiler or debugger. Uh, GCC, or if you want to use a GUI debugger, you're going to have to look at assembly code and figure out uh, values that are on the stack. Also, be sure you have some kind of file or hex dump utility. If you notice the picture there, uh, this was one of the puzzles. Basically, in the picture, if you do a hex dump of the picture, there were actual words in there that was the flag in order to to get the next clue. So, so uh, definitely make sure you have those types of utilities available. And of, and of course, any shell scripting languages um, that you may use, Python, Ruby, etc. Now, as I mentioned, there are lots of games available. We're going to take a look at just a sampling of, of some of them. So Pawn Adventure 3, Pawnee Island, Graphics are beautiful. The, the gameplay is just like other RPGs that maybe you've played online. Now recently there was the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. This one I actually have a demo of to show you in a little more detail. The DEF CON CTF is basically one of these mega CTFs that anyone that's really deep into this uh, probably aspires to be in. The qualifiers, though, is that they, they don't have any. They basically will let you know if you're invited to play, and um, I'm sure that's uh, quite an honor. Now, Pico CTF is a, it's really a beginner's capture the flag event. It's kind of a way to get your feet wet if you're new to CTFs. It's very enjoyable, though it is geared towards younger people. The puzzles are still quite fun, and it's put together by students at Carnegie Mellon University. Now, if you want to get plugged into the schedules and start knowing when you can sign up for CTFs, you need to use the ctftime.org website. I haven't seen any with uh, entry fees. There's almost always some kind of cash prizes that are available. Now we're going to take a look at our demo. So this is a video showing a Capture the Flag event. This is actually the 2015 SANS Holiday Hack Challenge. I just wanted to give you a feel for how the gameplay works. So I have my character here and uh, basically, you you move your avatar around, and um, uh, you can see that there are other players online as well. I'm going to actually go into this building. Uh, this is supposed to be Ed Scotus's house, 
and uh, there's Ed right here. And uh, so when you go to talk to these NPCs or non-playing characters, they will give you clues and give you more quests uh, that you can then, you know, continue to do. Uh, in this particular case, he's letting me know about some additional information. He also kind of goes into a... Um, he, he kind of goes off onto this tangent about um, looking at information on a file system and he provides a link to to see um, some different information about a file system and it takes you to a place on github so kind of cool um, the way that they present information uh, in a in a different way um, also in the gameplay there are hidden walls and such so you kind of have to uh, move yourself around. I found one over here. So this is a hidden room that I found and this man Tom is here and you can ask him particular questions about certain IP addresses and he will give you more clues on you know if you're on the right track or or not there's a there's a a, a pcap or a, a packet capture that you can download from another npc and you can look at that through wireshark and then you can come back to this guy and make sure that uh, you're on the right track so uh, there's also another hidden wall over here and i found uh, like a cookie which was a uh, Another quest I had to do, um, I'll show you my inventory bag. So I've pretty much figured all, out all the little quests. Um, but, um, but anyway, that's a little bit of an idea of, of how the gameplay works uh, for this particular example. Uh, also, there's uh, an achievement board. And so this shows you know how far you've gotten uh, with with all of the little puzzles. So this is inside of the Pico CTF game and uh, basically you have an avatar and I'm, I'm the little girl. In fact, I think everybody ends up having the same avatar and you have your own account that you can work against. But uh, what happens is, um, in this story, her father's kidnapped, and so now she's at this police station trying to basically help the policemen hack their computers so that <laughs> they can find her father. The, the story and, and this particular game, it's geared towards uh, younger people, high school, maybe, maybe uh, middle school-aged students, but... Um, but the puzzles are really quite good, and so I wanted to step you through one of them. So for this particular puzzle, the title of the puzzle is JavaScript, uh, with crypt, you know, written special. And it says that uh, this Tyran robotics lab uses a special website to encode their secret messages. Can you determine the value of the secret key? Now, when you click the link, <clears throat> Let me just move this up a little bit. When you click the link, this this page comes up, and if you were to just type something in, click encode, you can see that it is encoded in a base 64. Now, the puzzle actually wants you to determine the value of the secret key. Okay, so hopefully the programmer has placed some piece of information inside of whatever function is doing the actual encoding here to, um, to so that we can figure out what the key is. So the easiest way to do this is uh, if you go to Uh, I'm, I'm actually using Firefox right now, so if you go up in the corner and go to the developer tools and go ahead and uh, use the inspector. <coughs> and 
And so now what I can see is uh, on this page, there uh, is probably some sort of script to perform the encryption. I do see here in aes.javascript that uh, looks like it might be promising. So this is obviously some sort of library from googlecode.com that's being imported. Let's see if we can figure out uh, where that might be used. There's uh, some JavaScript right here uh, that looks like it might be using that library. So if I go ahead and double click this, it changes it to a format I can read much better. We can see that um, there's a global variable declared here called key and some comments it says since the key is generated when the page is loaded no one will be able to steal it by looking at the source code this must be secure so what the programmer has done is they're going to dynamically generate the key and they prefix that key with the word flag and underscore the problem of course with this design is because you're placing it on the client side, it's just the same as giving us the source code. So though you haven't hard coded a key, by, by just having the code here in JavaScript makes it very easy for us to, to basically take this code and uh, figure out what, what the key will be. So we're gonna go ahead and copy the inner HTML. I'm actually gonna bring up uh, my Kelly Linux machine. And uh, inside of here, I'm basically just going to place the same formula here, right? So, and the only thing that I've added is uh, the declaration that I need, the, the pound and the bang user bin python because we'll just run this in python but this is the formula to generate that secret key so <clears throat> so all we need to do is run our python command and it outputs the flag for this particular puzzle so it's flag underscore three 3744. So I'm just going to copy that, come back over into, and then place that as the input and, uh, and submit it. Now, because I've already solved this particular challenge, uh, it's letting me know that, that it's already solved for. Um, but in, uh, if you're doing this for the first time, you would, you would then get some points uh, added to your score. Uh, as you continue through the game, uh, you will see that there is an achievements uh, portion of that's keeping track of all of the puzzles that you've solved and how far along you are. So, and there's different categories here for the types of puzzles. So, uh, binary. There's uh, cryptography, reverse engineering and uh, miscellaneous so so finally my references I want to thank Jonathan Singer he basically spent uh, some nice sit down time with me explaining to me how CTFs work and showing me some key websites and most importantly the write-ups so after a CTF is over there's actually a github location where players post their solutions. This is really, really cool. This is where it really all comes together. So if you're trying to gear up for learning how to be a great CTF team player, this is the spot where you need to go. Start working on some old CTFs, sign up, go through the exercises. When you get stuck, look at the solutions to help get you through and learn that new that new way to perform the exploit or, um, or basically solve the puzzle.